INEC declares Fintiri winner of Adamawa governorship polls and the Inspector General of Police announces removal of Police Commissioner in Adamawa over conduct of supplementary elections as INEC demands investigation and prosecution of Adamawa rec. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Hanako. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has declared Amadou Fintiri the winner of the Adamawa State Governorship election. The returning officer, Mohamed Mele, declared the incumbent, Fintiri, of the People's Democratic Party winner on Tuesday after polling 430,861 votes to defeat his major counterpart, Aisha Binani, of the All Progressive Congress, APC, who polled 398,788 votes. The coalition exercise in the state was stopped on Sunday after President Electoral Commissioner Hudu Ari declared the candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Banani, winner of the elections, which held, uh, which led the commission on Monday to ask Hudu to stay away from office. Meanwhile, a federal high court in Abuja on Tuesday declined uh, the request uh, to hear an ex parte motion filed by the governorship candidate of the APC in Adamawa State, Senator Aisha Dahiru Ahmed. Binani. Now, Benani approached the court for a leave to file an application for judicial review of the administrative decision that was taken by the Independent National Electoral Commission on April 16 in respect of her declaration as the winner of the governorship elections in Adamawa State, which held on March 18, and the supplementary elections on April 15. Now, she argued that uh, after the coalition of results, INEC declared her the winner of the election, but the People's Democratic Party PDP and its candidate, Amadou Fintiri, the incumbent governor who is seeking a second term in office, violently disturbed the public peace and attacked an INEC national commissioner. Now, she went ahead to claim that the crisis that ensued forced INEC to void the original declaration, naming her the governor-elect uh, of the state. She also added that, the, that INEC did not have the power to void the declaration made as only an election petition tribunal has the power to void such a declaration. Well, joining us uh, to discuss tonight this and other matters is John Schreiber. He's a member of the PDP Presidential Convention Committee. And also joining us is Honorable Angu Ongu, who is a North Central Zonal Coordinator at Tiku Support Organization. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much. Great. For having us. Um, gentlemen, we're definitely going to be delving into uh, the books uh, when it comes to uh, Governor Fintery, who is obviously now going to sit for another four years as Governor of Adamo State. But let's start by looking at um, what happened and what transpired, um, which led to the, you know, the unrest and, of course, INEC's role in all of this. INEC has obviously uh, declared Governor Fintiri, and as we were speaking earlier on, uh, he has been issued his certificate of return, which makes him the governor-elect of um, Adamawa State. Um, but let's look at the situation where INEC had to um, discipline its um, resident electoral commissioner and called the action a usurping of the power of the returning officer. I'm going to start with you, Angu. Um, why do you think that this happened? Because many have queried that action, uh, knowing that we're coming from an election where there's so many questions that need to be answered. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Nigerians. Uh, we want to first of all thank Almighty God for saving Nigerian the stress of going through a political coup. The coup d'etat almost happened in Adamawa State, where the resident electoral commissioner that by the electoral act, he has no pass uh, confided on him to declare a winner in an election. Those pass are resident with a returning officer. Uh, so I want to thank Almighty God and congratulate Nigerians for not seeing a political coup happen in Adamawa. And to answer your question, uh, what would have resulted to the crisis we almost saw in Adamawa 
was a result of the uh, usurpation of uh, powers uh, by the INEC REC, uh, Kudu Yunusa Ari. He usurped the powers of the returning officer of the election the previous day that the elections had. Uh, there were coalition were, were going on. And at some point by left by 1 a.m. of that day, of that Sunday, it was himself that said, let's resume collation by 11 a.m. Only for him to return to the hall by 9 a.m. to declare uh, 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 the APC candidate the winner of the election. In in total disregard for the law because the law does not give him, as I said before, the powers to declare not just governments were yet to be so when do you start declaring winners of election election results being uh being collected and declared by the various returning local government uh, returning officers. That was what wanted to show go into uh, the crisis we almost had in our hands as Nigerians and in Adamawa State particularly. I, want, I would like to use this opportunity to uh, commend uh, INEC, particularly the national body, for, for, for standing up tall in defense of democracy. Uh, Nigerians won, democracy won, and not just the people of Adama State that won, but we all won. It's not uh, Amadu Umaru Fintiri's uh, win. It is a win for all of us that are true believers in democracy. A lot of people are celebrating with the uh, governor of Adamo State, who is also now governor-elect, being that he's been issued his certificate of return. A group of people had congratulated him and said that he not only contested uh, against several other people uh, um, and Binani, but he was contesting against forces of darkness. I wonder what they meant by that. But let's look at the man himself and his first tenor in office and um, what he has seemingly achieved. Many people would say that in four years, uh, there's, a, there's a, a, not a lot that you can achieve. But then we must um, recognize that he was given an iconic governor award um, sometime last year, um, I think in 2021, setting him aside as one of the most iconic governors. But aside from that, how well has he governed Adamo State from your perspective? I mean, he's your party man. Uh, from feelings we get from those that are really on ground in uh, Adamawa State. Uh, there is great transformation that has taken place in Adamawa State. It built a lot of flyovers. It, uh, the streets are littered. And that has extended into uh, several parts of the state in the areas of uh, provision of primary health care, payment of salaries, uh, up to up to point payment of salaries. You know, those are some of the basic the uh, electoral leads are asking for. The Nigerian people are not asking you for, for too much. They're asking that you provide them with the basics. And from the fillers, and you can see from the jubilations, uh, uh, on the streets of Adamawa, it is very clear that this man is loved by the people. And I would like to take us down memory lane when uh, Nyako was the governor and he had some issues, his deputy was removed. And uh, His Excellency Omar, Omar Ahmadu Fintri came and acted for three months. What really endeared him to the people was that when he came, there was a backlog of salaries for eight months. And within that period he was there, he cleared all of those salaries. And that really, really endeared him to the people. And as such, 
you know, when he presented himself for, for leadership as, you know, the point man for that state, the people did not hesitate. But I know that the man is really, really a child of destiny. Because in 2019, his election uh, uh, ran into, uh, sorry, in 2015, uh, 2019 now, 2019 now, his election ran into uh, a, 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 a rerun. And, you know, in 2023, uh, the same scenario is uh, uh, presented itself again. So, uh, His Excellency Omar Ahmed of is one I would like to say is a child of destiny. And it is as if all that he has gotten in life comes with a battle. But as the saying goes, the bitter the battle, the sweeter the victory. And I know that the sweetness of those victory will be when he consolidates on some of the uh, dividends of democracy he brought to the people of Adamawa that made them to overwhelmingly vote for him again, made them to stand by him, even in this very, very trying period. Uh, in the last, uh, should I say, 40, uh, 72 hours were very trying moments of high for him. When, just like you, you mentioned, forces of darkness, people that are bent on uh, bringing our democracy down, colluded. And I know that that collusion came from high top. Uh, if not, you will not see a commissioner or police accompanying a wreck to commit illegality. You will not see the boss of the civil defense corps, you know, accompanying the wreck to commit, you know, an illegality. You will not see also see the boss of the DSS. So uh, I, I want to say quickly that by the time the investigations are being done over what happened in Adamawa on Sunday, the investigation should go wide. The dragnet and those that should be prosecuted. It shouldn't just be a matter of INEC. Everybody that was sitting with Mr. Hudu, you need to array that money to commit that illegality. Should be prosecuted because we are talking about the morality of those country, the morals of those country. We shouldn't have a situation because the younger generation are watching what is happening, where somebody contests in an election and maybe calls his friend to come and declare him winner. If if nothing is done in prosecuting those ones that committed this illegality or were part of it, we are going to set a very bad precedent for. Uh, 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 our democracy. Thank you. And so let, 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 me, let me go to John. John, let's talk about the politics um, within the PDP in, in Adamawa State. There are speculations and certain allegations that the, the flag bearer for the president, that's the presidential candidate of the PDP, was not necessarily supporting um, Governor Fintiri in this election. How true is it? Well, uh, First of all, I would like to congratulate the uh, PDP family. I also like to congratulate the uh, Adamawa family, uh, the PD uh, people, and also uh, Governor Fitchery, because it, it was a trying moment for our nation, especially, and for our nascent democracy. So this is, I think this is one victory for democracy, but we should take it further by ensuring that the needful is done, like uh, Angus said, prosecution of everyone involved in that democ demo de what I call the democratic coup. Because this is, this I'm, is something I'm, that... I'm not is certain like a if comedy. a coup is dem democratic. There's nothing democratic okay. about so, a coup. Because I can't imagine a civilian committing... Hmm. It, it used to be the army. But when a civilian decides to go... The other way, you, you know how desperate uh, such a person is. But let me say this. Um, as it is, whoever is saying Atiku is not behind Pintiri is as a joker. Because no, this, now, for instance... What is the relationship is the between Mr. Fintiri and Mr. Abubakar? Father and son relationship. 
and leader and follower relationship. That is the relationship. And also a party leader and a two party leaders relationship. Because you could see, Atiku was on ground. He should have gone for, for Hajj, but he's Nigeria. That shows you how important that election is to him. That shows you how important Fintory is to him. Right? So anybody throwing that wide card in, 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 in uh, the airwave or writing is actually being mischievous. Atiku is a Democrat. Atiku would not have to make noise. Atiku does not quarrel with anyone. If, you know, for, he's a gentleman par excellence that I believe every politician should copy from, all right? So, Pintiri and Atiku's relationship is solid. And nobody should tell you otherwise. Mm. Nobody should tell you otherwise that there's another relationship beyond that. Very cordial, very connected. They are both, listen, if you go to Adamawa, they will tell you for a very long time that they never knew that Pintiri and Atiku are this close. And don't forget that a true leader is seen by his action. And that action, Atiku Abubakar has actually portrayed in uh, Adama Concerning Fintry. And he has spoken about it. He wrote a very, 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 very poignant pres really press release that actually that everything must be done to ensure that the needful is done. He put his word out there. So I don't know what else people are asking for from him. Now, Angus, Angus spoke about some of the um, strides that he's made um, in his first tenure. And, and you know, as a politician, that the first tenure is when every person who's serious tries to prove himself. But then we've also seen um, in this country uh, how politicians in their second tenure take a back seat and do nothing make promises and don't keep those promises. What's um, in this second tenor for the people of Adamawa State and how do we see a Fintiri um, playing out in the next four years? Let's not forget that um, early this month, I think on the 1st of April, uh, there was this back and forth between him and Boyer disagreeing over election, uh, electoral violence. He was also um, allegedly um, pointed to as one who sponsored thugs, you know, to uh, disrupt the elections. Well, Pintry is a gentleman. Even with this, with this, um, with the situation that happened with a daylight robbery, or will I say early morning robbery, of his victory. In fact, Fintry won this election from get go. He was already leading Binani by about 31,000 votes. And what was left from the 69 polling units was about, was about uh, 34,000 votes. And in Nigeria election, there is no way you can even have a 50% turnout. The largest we've had in that number or so was during Buhari's time, 39%. So let's assume, let's even assume decided to give uh, Binani 15,000. She couldn't have won. So he won. Just be, the mischief behind the whole thing, the scenario that played out, was what caused for this rerun. Now, Fintory, for a person, go to Adama today. All the hospitals, you will see the, 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 you see the landmark of Fintory. Go to, that, to any local government, you see road. Go to uh, Adama today, you will see schools. That is what Pintri has brought to the table. And that is a man that could blend with the Christians and the Muslims. You, you understand that Adama is a, is a Christian Muslim community. You have the Hausa, the Fulani, and the Chamba. Or this is a man that can sit in any of the community and be acceptable, accepted. Mm -hmm. Right? So this has endeared him to a lot of people. He's a man of the people. He's a man that is ready, out of the little resources that Adama has, he's able to manage and turn around Adama's state. Go to Go, just take a, take a trip. Maybe in your next vacation, go to Adama, take one or two days trip, and you see what I'm talking about. It's not just about talking about it, it's about seeing it. Because politicians these days, they, they, the people just talk about what they don't even know about. And I believe in this second term that Pinterest will improve on what is done, and more so as a payback for the trust and the confidence the people of Adama have placed on him concerning this election. They stood by him. The, the joy on the street is something else. 
Everybody's talking about it. No violence. He's not going around seeking for congratulatory messages. People are actually congratulating him. You, do you understand? So that is what Pintery is all about. Okay. And, there's a, 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 and that is what a, a group in leadership uh, called Leadership uh, League is also all about. They ensure, they will also, they, they've seen that this is a man that has a pedigree to do what is needful. And that's why the PDP family is behind him. Nigerians are behind him. And actually, I believe that the reason they wanted to plan that electoral coup was because this man is acceptable. That's, that's the only way they could have done it to win. Because someone that's performing, you don't change your winning team in the middle of the game. Okay, let me talk about some of the mistakes that political pundits have appointed to uh, under the Finteri administration. One of those is the fact that um, politically he has centered Adamawa's social political economy around himself. These are a group of political analysts, you know, uh, analyzing what he's done and what they categorize as mistakes. They've also said that, I mean, you and I know this, that Adamawa state is one of those states that you can categorize as a civil service state. And the governor, obviously knowing this, um, salaries, wages, contracts, and patronage uh, are, you know, the oils that are supposed to lubricate, whether we like it or not, social and economic order of a state. The governor himself knows this. He knows more than anybody, but we hear that he chooses to look the other way. Uh, he has underestimated political implications of such stands um, and he's doing this according to them because he wants to get a second tenure. Hence my, my previous question. The, in the first tenure, governor tries to position himself and make himself look like the good guy. But how are we certain that that same staying power will go? How do you even build a political economy around one person? We hear that he runs an inclusive government, but how inclusive is that government? And how do we see this playing out for the long run? Well, you know, most analysts, as long as it's not part of their family or part of their political uh, equation, they tend to want to run people down, especially when you see a performing governor. Uh, we've seen in this country a governor that has been voted out a sitting government that couldn't get a second term. Late uh, Ajimobi is one of them, right? We've had one or two others. So for people to come with that direction, you see, Pintry is not known to be the person that will, will be giving out monies to people when they don't deserve it. Whatever you get is what you deserve, right? So projects are done with all sense of transparency. Projects are done that would actually affect the people directly. It is not about just being frivolous with money, just uh, become a man that will just be giving out money to people just to feel good. No, it's about the people for him. And what I know of him, governance is about the people. Mm -hmm. Governance is about all. Okay. Governance is about inclusiveness. Okay. Now, there's no, no, within the system in Adamawa, you see all tribes, all religions. And that tells you of a man who is ready to serve the people. A man who is committed to service. John, you John, cannot see. John, I like I like see, how yes. you're you're trying to praise Governor Fintiri, but I want to just yeah. quickly go to Angu now. Angu, I just want to take wow. your mind back to some of the PDP stakeholders in Adamo State that used to be a backbone for the party who have left. I mean, for example, uh, we've had the likes of Senator Aboy Shaku, uh, former Governor Balangilari. We've had Senator Grace Bent, many others. Um, but we also realized that the, the governor had failed um, and his team failed to realize that they, they, as, at this point, they've not been able to attract those same kind of, kinds of people in the PDP that have that same kind of prowess, like the ones that they've lost to the APC. So again, like I said earlier on, if everything centers around the governor, how is that best serving the interests of the party? Because again, the PDP cannot be about one person. We've seen how this has played out even before this election and how it's still playing out today. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> democracy, it's a government for the people and by the people. It's not about uh, one big name, former this, former that, uh, in uh, democracy. I know a lot of our people tend to peddle their names when the electoral value is uh, uh, it's not there. Uh, you know, all the names you are calling, Senator Abo, Ngilari, Grace Bent, 
uh, uh, mention them. A lot of these politicians are living on past glory. They have nothing to offer the people. And most of them, if you check the reasons why they left the PDP, it, was, it wasn't big, it wasn't ideological. It was because of their personal selfish interests. But isn't that, that, the them, case, isn't uh, that the case the for party. any politician, whether you're moving from the APC to the PDP or the PDP to the... I mean, this is what it is, whether we like it or not. It, it, Politicians it, 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 leave for selfish interest. interest. That, that's what I'm they don't leave it's because they want to serve you and I. They can serve from people. anywhere. So I it don't has not mean, always been... Uh, but please, pardon? this is the case for every politician, isn't it? They always leave for one re personal reason or the other, not necessarily in the interest of the people. Am I right? That, 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 that's what I'm saying. That's what so I'm what driving makes at. these guys I'm different? driving at to say that uh, Governor His Excellency uh, Omar Romero Fintiri was never perturbed by the fact that the so-called big names you are mentioning left the party. He kept on giving the people the dividends of democracy. And by the special grace of God, today he has been re-elected against and over all odds to continue the good works he's doing in uh, in Adamawa, bringing uh, governance closer to the people, giving the people dividends of democracy. That is what we want. It's not about one big name or the other, I uh, was this, I was that. The, uh, the democracy should be about the people. Democracy should be about okay. giving the people dividends. Uh, democracy should be about bringing governance at the doorstep of the people. The people need good hospitals, the people need good roads, the people need to have uh, access to uh, portable drinking water, the people need to have access to electricity. Th these are just the basic demands of the Nigerian people. All right. I'm so our mode of entry, he has a chance now. He should do more and write his name in gold. All right. Well, well, we hope that that's what happens. I want to say thank you. John Tribe is a member of the PDP Presidential Convention Committee, and Honorable Angu Ongu is uh, the North Central Zonal Coordinator at Tiku Support Organization. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Unfortunately, time is not on our side. Thank you for being thank here. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Great. It's good to have us in your studios. So All right. Thank you. Well, thank we'll take a quick much. break. When we return, we'll continue our discussion on the calls for the prosecution of the Commissioner of Police in Adamawa State as a result of the fallout during the Adamawa State election. Stay with us.